going to begin the story of my journey to and through the Democratic Club of Santa Rita area. At the time, my wife and I moved to Green Valley. The club itself dates back to 1964, with its current name adopted in 2004. But here I'm going to address my own connection with the club, which started in April of 2010. After 35 year careers in academia, we retired in May of 08 to Green Valley and took up residence in the Quail Creek community. While we were getting settled and getting acquainted with Green Valley, DCSRA was doing some important things. On April 14th of 2010, for example, uh, the board approved establishment of a headquarters and signed the contract for leasing space in the Continental Shopping Mall. In June of 2010, one of the activities of the grand opening of the headquarters was an afternoon of outdoor festivities in the Malls Plaza. Congressman Gabby Giffords was a featured guest. I got to, I got to meet her. Um, we shook hands. She gave me her trademark, dazzling, charming smile. And she looked up and said to me, and I quote, you look just like my husband, unquote. And I didn't know what to say to that because I didn't know then that her husband was Mark Kelly, the American astronaut. It has been said that Mark and I share the same barber or not. But these were dedicated, serious Democrats and that this club was the political home that I sought. After conversations with Jane Wood, the president at the time, Ruth and I joined DCSRA. During the next few months, I attended monthly meetings and teamed up with other members on a program concerned with economic inequality. Then three things happened in fairly rapid succession. First, on January 23rd of 2011, I was asked to be an at-large member of the board. Uh, I had some real serious reservations about that because I had never really been involved with political stuff before. Second, I was then asked to be the secretary, again, over my objections, but I was placated with, and I quote, all you have to do is take notes. And then third, I was asked to serve as vice president for programs. Now I was really free because I didn't know any of the local political dignitaries. Because of some of my academic administrative work, I figured I could manage a committee and I could wing it. It turned out to be much easier than I thought. I inherited a program committee, the members of which were really supportive and wonderfully knowledgeable. I got to know various politicians to whom I invited to give presentations to our club. The job was made a lot easier by those VIPs who I was trying to get to do programs for us. Because you see, politicians are in the business of doing stand-up routines and they expect to do that stuff. So making the ask was really easy. Jane Wood, the club president, was stepping down to deal with some family matters. Longtime member Marla Doherty was the main arm twister in all of this and leaned on me to do the president thing to fill out Jane's term of office. I was really worried about that uh, because I was, didn't think I could bend her up to doing the job. But eventually I caved and was appointed president by the board. I must have done some things right because I was nominated again in December of 2011 and was elected to a full two-year term as club president. The way the club thinks of itself is embodied in its mission statement. Uh, and that mission statement is this, and I quote, DCSRA shall influence, foster, encourage, and promote the aims and objectives of the Democratic Party and aid in the election of Democratic candidates for public office. 
The headquarters was open year round in support of Democratic candidates and causes. We supported the coordinated campaign and we provided office space for field coordinators. We ran phone banks, we organized walks. We were the depository for candidate literature, things like brochures and yard signs. We carried our message to the broader community by participating in community events. And during campaign season, we lived and breathed get out the vote. So what did I personally accomplish as club president? Well, the club voted to make the headquarters permanent. Uh, and that means that we needed money. So fundraising was a high priority endeavor uh, just to keep the show going. Uh, we continued and expanded the yearly dinner and auction. Uh, another thing, we started the annual Friends of Headquarters mailing. We worked on increasing our social connectedness so we get in touch with our donors by having wine and cheese receptions following each of our monthly programs. And we launched the weekly email newsletters. Now we know that as the blast. In hindsight, the list is so short because of a lesson that I learned. It's not what I did, it's what we did. You see, I was graced with smart, competent, and motivated colleagues who really did the hard work that made our project successes. I am very grateful for the constructive criticism and support from previous chairs, Peggy Pierce, Barbara Clark, and Jane Wood. In August of 2020, as I reflect on my history, with DCSRA. I can't help but think that the club and its headquarters are more important than ever before. We live in a time of turbulence. Most of our institutions are under blatant attack by a man who would be king. Our two-party political system has failed because the Conservative Party does not live up to its own conservative, let alone democratic values. In less than 80 days, we're going to discover whether America still has a soul left to defend. The other day, one of the visitors to our headquarters said, and I quote, I didn't know there were Democrats in Green Valley or Arizona, unquote. Yes, there are, and we shall defend and promote democratic values. I am scared and appalled at the prospect of four more years of Donald Trump. Biden does not yet have this sewed up. It is still a, a statistical possibility that Trump can win. And if he does, I fear for our democracy. We have to the, use the tools that are available to us, and that's the right to vote. And even there, Trump is attacking us. We have to get, get out every single possible vote. That's the only way we're ever going to beat him. And, and we must win.